right, so today I'm going to discuss what happened when I tried the carnivore diet for two weeks, okay? I think it's very important for everyone to experiment and try different diets because not every single person does well on one diet. This concept of one size fits all, that every single person needs to be on the same diet, is just not real because the body is very, very different. You have different genetics, you have different environments, you have different body problems. What's good for one person might not be the best for another. That being said, the carnivore diet produces some really amazing results for a lot of people. And I'm talking about anyone with gut issues, autoimmune problems. So what did I eat on this diet? Well, beef, pork, eggs, seafood, shellfish, and I did do dairy on this program as well. I did a lot of sheep cheese and I did a little kefir and uh, I didn't do a lot of organ meats. I just, I don't like organ meats, but I did do fish liver as in cod liver. And so this two week test wasn't necessarily a before and after on a blood test or anything like that. It was mainly a subjective test to just to see how I felt. And one thing I did really benefit from, which I'm gonna get into, is I did have some bloating that I didn't even know I was having. And I'll tell you where the bloating was coming from. It wasn't coming from the vegetables that I was eating. It was coming from the nuts I was eating. I was doing an experiment trying to test out would it be better to eat in the morning versus the afternoon, et cetera, et cetera. And what I basically concluded from all that is that to keep it simple, I'm just gonna eat when I'm hungry. Now, as far as uh, some other things I've noticed, um, did I notice much change with my energy? Not really, because I normally have very high energies. Did I notice any change with my bowel movements? And yes, I did. In fact, the first few days, um, I didn't really go to the bathroom, and, and then I started going. So I think what happened was there was a bit of an adjustment by my microbes in my gut. And this is always the big question that people want to know. If you're not feeding your microbes fiber, what are they living on? Well, the microbiome is an extremely complex topic, and time will tell. We don't have that figured out. I mean, there's people doing this carnivore diet for many years, and they do very well. As far as vitamin C goes, you know, where am I getting my vitamin C? I think when you do the carnivore, the need for vitamin C goes way, way down. And I haven't heard anyone developing like scurvy or any type of scurvy problems or vitamin C deficiency problems when they're on carnivore. In fact, they do have a lot of energy and they have huge improvements. And I also know people who do not do dairy on carnivore. I did it because I love dairy. I don't see and have a problem with dairy. Um, I like European cheeses. I like goat's cheese. I like sheep cheese. I do not like processed cheese and I don't have any of that. And I don't go crazy with like excessive amounts, but um, I think there's a lot of benefits to high quality cheese. But many people have reactions to that. And if you have gut inflammation, that might not be the best thing for you. You know, some people might say with dairy that there's a bit more carbs and carnivore is zero carbs, but you can also make the argument about seafood. If you're doing like um, shrimp or lobster or something like that, there's carbs in that. There's also carbs in um, organ meats too, and not a lot, um, but there is some. So when you're doing carnivore, you know, we're, we're basically bringing our carbs as close to zero as possible. And then there's a, a group of people who are doing the carnivore that then switch to, you know, meat, honey, and uh, fruit, and et cetera. Personally, I'm not going in that direction. I don't recommend it for most people. So it doesn't make sense to me that that would be recommended to the general public. We have to look at the diet as something individual. If our mitochondria is healthy, and it can use various fuels if someone's doing more carbs, they're burning those fuels, and it's not creating a problem. But for the majority of the population, you're going to create a problem if you start overwhelming that mitochondria. I've done some videos on this topic. I'm going to do more on this topic of metabolomic testing. That's basically a, a unique type of technology that allows someone to, instead of just looking at several bile markers in your blood, you're looking at the entire picture of your biochemistry. So you could really visualize that Krebs cycle and each uh, stage in the assembly line from food to energy. And you can find out the specific areas that are bottlenecked and, and from that determine um, really what's going on. So you get a much better picture of if the person is on the right diet. This is kind of like an individualized test that you can test yourself against yourself over time with a lot of data, and you can look into your biochemistry 
and see um, what's going on. And it gives you prediction on, on various things because you can even predict diabetes like decades before you get diabetes versus looking at your blood thinking that, oh yeah, I have normal blood glucose. So there's no chance of ever getting diabetes. Well, are you looking at insulin? Oh no, we omitted that. You're just looking at blood glucose. So metabolomics, I think, is going to be the wave of the future as far as medicine and, and healthcare versus just focusing on your LDL or your other lipids. So getting back to the carnivore diet, the question is, will I continue the diet? Um, no, I, I'm not going to continue it. Um, I'm going to continue the same proteins, but I really miss my salad. And some people react with salad. And I'm not talking about consuming a lot of broccoli, which bloats the heck out of me, or certain vegetables that create more bloating. Uh, but I'm talking about like arugula, high quality romaine lettuce that I grow in my garden. I also miss the fermented vegetables like sauerkraut, uh, pickles, kimchi, things like that. On my salad, I like to put the extra virgin olive oil. Uh, the one I like is from Italy. And I love to put the um, real Parmesan cheese. I think it's uh, called Parmigiano Reggiano. I, I probably butchered the pronunciation. I also like to put uh, nutritional yeast on my salad. I love to put feta cheese on the salad. And plus, when you add cheese on it, uh, any oxalates that are left in there are bound with the calcium in the cheese. And they're taken right out through the digestive system. And I'm also going to include berries in the diet. But I'm not going to go back to the nuts. Anyway, I wanted to give you a quick update on what happened with my uh, version of the carnivore diet. And I would love to hear your successes. If you're doing it as well, please comment down below. And since we're on the topic of the carnivore diet, I think it's really important to understand the health benefits of red meat. And if you haven't seen this video, check it out. I put it up right here. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. 
That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.